नम शिवाय गुरवे सच्चिदानंदमूर्त निष्प्रपंचय सत निरलंबाय तेजसे शंकर शंकराचार्य केशवरायण सूत्रभाषकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वर गुरुरात्मे मुक्ति भेद विभागिने व्यमदेहाय श्रीदक्षिणमूर्त नम श्रीदक्षिणमूर्त नम ओ शाते 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 ओ गुर्भ्यो नम हरि सो लेट इज सल कंटिन्यू टुडे अबाउट द सन्यास दर्शन and then and we have class also today 8 to 9 about saiva darshan so <clears throat> this is the course all about the banapasta sanyas course mm -hmm. so all subject all about to sanyas and you have to understand again sanyas means walking into path of the reality hmm? path of the truth sanyas is the part path of love path of truth path of reality or a part of a path of a vidya path of a wisdom hmm? that is the sanyas sanyas is not all about to renounce the worldly life but the sanyas is all about to renounce the avidya hmm? free from avidyas free from suffering free from the misery that is all about sanyas sanyas most of the time we think simply save the head or to wear the orange robe huh? is not about the sanyas you must be clear that the sanyas is not all about to like a sect so many people they think sanyas is a sect huh? but sanyas is a state of the conscious state of the, yes. sanyas is a state of the consciousness samanyas but sam means harmony and sam means also through harmony through equanimous of the mind one able to enter into vidya the wisdom the atma gyan so they are for which is samatvam yoga uchyate in the gita so they are for traditionally those who are going to enter into life of sanyas they must study properly in the traditional monasteries or ashram life hmm? so they study gita upanishads yoga sutras sankhya philosophy naya basic and uttar mimamsa purva mimamsa so many that the classical philosophy of india where one is able to understand what is avidya and what is vidya so sanyas is not about to simply saving the head i repeat again and putting on his cloth or life in the ashram life that is not sanyas that you must be clear hmm? that must be clear so sanyas is the is a lifestyle the path of vidya the path of wisdom the path of atma gyan or the brahma gyan but of course when you go to class 1 class 2 class 3 when you study school college or universities you have certain discipline of the life the code of the disciplines so when you are entering the path of sanyas to saving the head or grow the hairs or putting the orange cloth living the ashram is the code of disciplines and is the code of a discipline of the life that must be clear 
So therefore, Shama Nyasa, and this is a Banaprasa Sanyas course. So Banaprasa Sanyas course, so Banaprasa Sanyas course is the, about the third stages of the lifestyles. You see, first lifestyle, we have four lifestyles to be complete education. Nowadays, we study uh, in our social education, right? When you study school, then college, then you become university like bachelor degrees or master degrees. After that, you get PhD or I don't know, some degrees, but still you are far from the Vidyas. So you have education of Abhidya. Sansari the Abhidya, full of Abhidyas. No matter you study college, university, and all study, even up until the PhD doctorate, eh? you study doctorate of uh, MA, eh? MA in psychology or philosophy or geography, eh? economics, so many things. But you have education of uh, Abhidya, you are doctor of uh, Abhidya, right? Doctor of uh, Agyana, Abhidya. Hmm? That is still not reality. That leads to suffering. So no matter what kind of study, you study in the samsara, is all leads to the Abhidya. Therefore, no matter what kind of degree you have, how many doctorate degrees behind your name, right? Or behind or after? After, I think. <laughs> after a name, so you put write gold medalist, gold medalist housing, an economic or whatever. You know, you have so many gold medals. But still, still, your path of uh, far from the Vidyas. All kind of knowledge leads to the suffering, the miseries and obstacles. So, therefore, you have to be very clear. You are educating of nothing but education of the Abhidya. But the sannyas life is all about to, to make you understand what is the difference between the Abhidya and Abhidyas. You have already full of Abhidya, but you don't understand if it is Abhidya or it is Abhidya. But as for the samsara, we take as a vidya, as a knowledge, as a wisdom. Sometimes we say, oh, this person is great scholar. He has so many knowledge, a eh? lot of knowledge. But for us, a person has so much in the abhidya, in sufferings, is a eh? obstacles in miseries. Therefore, you see, the most of the educated people in the world, they suicide, they hang themselves, they become depression, hyperactive, right? And all kind of diseases arising around them and within them. So you can see that what kind of tension we carry in the world. Eh? We suffer, let you suffer. So that the education of today, eh? that the education of today and we are educated such education. But we have to be clear the sannyas. So sannyas is the third stage, a final stage. We say first brahmacharya, grihastha, bhanaprasth and sannyas. But our topic is the Banaprasa Sanyas. So Banaprasa Sanyas is the third stages of the lifestyle when withdrawing your duties from the samsara, eh? then I enter into sanyas. So brahmachari means is not abstinent from sex, is all about to the you are following the right education. Brahmachari means right education, the proper education, education of a vidya. So that is called Brahmacharya. So in ancient time, so age of eight to age of 22 or 25, normally the girls, they study age of 22, and then for boys age of 26. But somehow in ancient time, people study in Gurukul from age of eight, that's called Brahmacharya as from age of eight to 26 or 25 normally, the categorically. 25 to 30, 25 to 50 years old, Grihastha, eh, household life or taking responsibility of the social duties. So Griyas is all about to not to marry and to have children. So sometimes I ask the people, I'm sorry to tell this sentence. And there's somebody ask, why marry? Say so I can have the license to have sex. So that is the consciousness of people today. You understand me? They get license to have sex. That is the, that is the they think about marriage. But we have to understand what is marriage. Marriage is all about to the taking responsibility of the society, eh? taking responsibility of the creation, taking preserve and taking care of the creation. Am I clear that? Taking care of the nature, taking care of the prakriti, 
Uh, that is called Grihastha. Uh, and who taking care of all, all three lifestyles? The people who live in this Brahmacharya, the people who live in the Vanaprastha, the people who live in the Sanyas. So Grihastha have the more duties. And Grihastha, the household of people, they must take responsibility and taking care of all. Sanyas taking care of the Vanaprastha people, taking care of the Brahmacharya people. So household duty not very easy. So you have to clear so Grihastha means and to take responsibility of the society, the nature, the world, uh, whoever uh, depend on you. So that is very important. That is for me, Grihastha, mm, household duties. And then third stage is called Banaprastha. Banaprastha where? And you are withdrawing your responsibility from the samsara and slowly and hand over your duties to the next generation to the Grihastha again. So you have to give duties to your Grihastha people. So therefore, after uh, uh, the people who are leading Grihastha life, after age of 50, they give the responsibility to their children, hmm, their children, and who can take a responsibility also Grihastha. So after 50, so they advise their own children, let get to this, go to the, either you go to the Sanyas life or adopt the Grihastha life, or go to Grihastha or go to Sanyas, not in between. Hmm. So they are for after Brahmacharya. So in ancient time, they decide to marry or to be a sadhu, not in between. In India, I think now I can understand, we have two lifestyles in India, either sadhu or sadhi. Sadhi karo, neither sadhu bano. Eh? Sadhi karo, neither sadhi sadhu bano. So the, the parents are advised, now is the time, after 25, let you marry eh? or adopt the sannyas life. Go to stay in No other way. In between, the life does not, it doesn't lead to anything. As per the culture of India. But somehow we can see that also many Europeans, you see, most of the time, neither they are the sadhi or the sadhu. They never become sadhu or they are not going to actually, they marry. And you can see that the code of disciplines of the different parts of the world, they are not proper responsibility. And you see that, so when you will not marry, you have children, and there is no commitment of nothing, so your government taking care. Many single people in around the world, after marry, you divorce, you live alone, and your wife, your husband, right? You live alone, your children live alone. End of the day, the nobody taking care of the children as well. So finally, you end of the day, end off with your government. So nowadays, many old people, they living in old age house, right? Even in either man or the woman, children sometimes they can't take, uh, uh, actually, uh, the parents can take the responsibility of their own children. So many children end of the day, end up with the government as well. So you can see that how the government taking care of the whole society. And most of the time, and your life is all about government. And at the end of the day, you have to understand who is the government. So government is no one, and you are one of them also government. Your life already disaster, and your government became also disaster, right? That the such people are, such kind of world you're living today. So what I try to uh, speak with you, it is about analysis. What kind of life will... world with a century we don't have complete education and without complete education there is no proper vidyas proper wisdom so So, anyway, we are still. So, what I like to speak with you, we have the four lifestyles and all about the four kinds of education. So, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Banaprasa, and Sanyas. So, today the topic is Sanyas Darshan. And Sanyas Darshan means to see, to realize and to have vision. So darshan means, and sannyas means, 
to walk on the path of uh, the truth and to realize the truth. So that is the all about sannyas darshan. Mm -hmm. But literally means renounce the worldly life and engage into uh, engage into atma jnana. Mm, atma jnana. Engage into atma jnana. Whatever the life you are going to adapt in ashram. I just give an example today. Some Indian person and calling from the Karnataka state of southern India. He said, I want to, I want to get the initiation of sannyas. <laughs> I was a little bit laughing. I say, you see, I'm not married. I said, I'm not asking that. He said, I'm age of 45. I said, I'm not, I did not ask anything to you. But anyway, what you are exactly expecting from sannyas? <laughs> He tell me, what kind of yoga you are teaching? I say, what kind of question? You want to, you want to uh, get into the sannyas life. Then after that, he asks, what kind of sadhana I have to do after sannyas? I say, again, I say, are you, I think you are confused completely. Sannyas means for me, you simply come to guru and surrender. No further questions. And whatever guru the guide, and you have to, you have to walk on that path. Because sannyas means we are end of all sadhanas. Sannyas starts there. When you end all sadhana, then sannyas starts. When you complete all education, you complete in the society. And when you are full of avidya, when suffering starts, then come to sannyas. <laughs> eh? Most of the time, people get into sannyas when you completely, the out of order in sannyas is samsara. So, such a people like Lord Buddha, he was totally unhappy. Uh, he was prince. Uh, he was prince. And he was married man, not unmarried. He was married man. He had full of uh, material pleasures and he had the palace and so on. But the final word. And he was uh, end of the day miserable person. Therefore, he left the kingdom and became sannyas. Then, anyhow, I told him this guy, you please come to ashram. Then we can talk about it. Then he tried to keep going and talking with me. I said, no, there is nothing to talk for. You want to take sannyas? So simply come to ashram. Then I'll guide you what has to be done. And I told him in ancient time, people came to ashram for 12 years at least. They spent from age of 8 to 25. And after that, we think about sannyas. Mm -hmm. We think about sannyas. So actually, most of the people, uh, as most of the people today, Misunderstood. Hmm? Today misunderstood. As per the, I think uh, we are not actually confused, but education, what we are educated from the samsara, from the society, that education make us so much confusion. So much confusion. Am I clear at this point? <laughs> so not our own, because first thing, our mother is responsible. Second is our father responsible. Then society responsible. Then your teacher is responsible. Then your teachers are responsible. All your problems of today. So therefore, we have to first to break the head of our mother, <laughs> especially. <laughs> so sometimes you have boom to the face of the brain of our mother. So what I mean? So most of the time. Of course, I make the jokes. We supposed not blame to not even our mother. So if you are educated properly, we must take your own responsibility without blaming to no one, even to your society, even your parents, and no one. And you have to adapt the proper education, if you have wrong education. But it's very difficult. And to actually the spiritual or the sannyas life in the 21st century today. I think. I'm going to speak something very much sense. Uh, it is like uh, how say sentiments. It is all about sentiments. Like you see in Indians, like here also, Naina is say, grown up and born also in London. You see many you study, you have been studying yoga teacher training, right? You have any already get. And here the people, most of the time in my platform, on my platform here, everyone well educated about yoga. They have all yoga teacher training certificates. But you see that how many people really 
We used to have Atma Jnana. The aim of yoga in order to have Atma Jnana. Nothing else. To know the truth and to free from avidyas. Right? Patanjali explained very clearly. Very clearly. What is the aim of yoga? To free from avidya. Asmita, Raga, Vesa, Avinivesa is Klesaha. So aim of yoga to free from classes. And how to free from the classes? And while are free from avidya, asmita, raga, ves, avinivesa, the five things. But today, in 21st century, we study yoga simply hand to mouth, nothing else. How we study yoga and become yoga teacher and teach yoga and get money. That's all. Like every laborers working in the street, they working eight hours, they get 500 rupees or 10 euros or 20 euros. End of the day, they buy a bottle of alcohol or a bottle of bread or milk or, you know, vegetables. Like that, today, many yoga teachers around the world, simply, they study yoga, how to get a job, how to teach, to survive. You see that? We are far from the reality. We are far from the vidyas and wisdoms. You can see that. Not 99.9%, 100% 90 yoga teacher around the world, they study yoga for nothing, only hand to mouth. So how can yoga is help you to free from the avidyas? This is my question, Matthew. So therefore, I try to and uh, teach this sannyas course, the Vanta sannyas course, and bring to right topics because study yoga it does not is not going to help nothing except hand to mouth, except you can earn some bread and some milk and vegetables and a bottle of alcohol at the evening. Because many yoga teachers are spending money end of the evening, they can have a nice bottle of alcohol, the beer, the wine, very nice. I see these things <laughs> in my life. Many yoga teachers, they buy very nice alcohol at the end of the evening. Could you imagine that? And they buy a lot of uh, eggs. Are they going to meet up or eating the fish, for example? This kind of things today. The moral part of yoga is lost today. The value of yoga lost today in 21st century. So therefore, and what I try to uh, speak to you here, be wise, the name of yoga, hmm? be wise and guide yourself properly. So guide yourself positively and properly. What and what is the aim of yoga to understand? Hmm? You must guide properly to yourself. Of course, without blaming to no one. If you are in this platform, <laughs> you understand what you have been studying, forget it. And still you can add your butter, bread, butter, chapati, or bottle of alcohol, no problem. But you're supposed not out of a, the meaning of yoga. What the ancient time, you know, the great masters, the great races, great gurus, they preserve the science of yoga until today. And they're giving the, the invaluable, means you can't actually value the science of yoga. But today, we misguided. Even the modern super, uh, super, uh, I would say supermarket yoga teacher, Coca-Cola teacher, right? Not the yoga teacher, Coca-Cola teachers. <laughs> so Coca-Cola teachers are around the world today. Hmm? So like that. So what I mean to be yogi, and you must be clear, you must free from your own suffering and miseries and help to others as well. So that is all about the Sanyas course. Eh? Sanyas course. I'm here to simply not guiding you because I'm not your master to guide you. I'm not your teacher, all of you, to guide you. But I'm here to make you aware. Eh? I'm here how you can develop the consciousness within yourself. All What is the avidya and what is the vidya. So Sanyas course is all about to, to understand what is the difference between avidya and vidyas. Uh, that is the Sastras, as for the Sastras. Therefore, and we're touching the subject of Gita, Upanishads, Shiva Sutras. Today evening, you are going to study Shiva Sutras. That uh, are that, uh, what I'm going to give the Sanskrit quotations, like Patanjali Yoga Sutras. So this Sanyas course included a lot of subjects. And it's good for you to get some kind of information if you really wish to understand what are the meaning of yoga or if you understand what is the meaning of life and what is the meaning of life. That's very, very important. It's not very important 
to understand your body or the mind or the atma. But at first, to understand what you are exactly, right? You can understand yourself. If I say you are not this body, not the mind, you are the self. But that will not make any sense. Hmm? It's not make any sense to you. Because yoga means all about to, to realize what you have, hmm? exactly what you have. And that you must realize. And that you must experience. And that is the wisdom. Hmm? That the wisdom. And that is called darsan. Darsan means to realize as it is. A special knowledge. And darsan means special knowledge to realize. Not intellectually, not materially or sensually, but beyond mind, matter, and phenomenon. Find out witness, eh? witness and observe. There the wisdom appears. Most of the time, if, our, if we are not witness of our senses of the mind, then it's not possible to have the proper wisdom. Most of the time, we are involved. Hmm? We are involved. I would like to something to quote about the about the sannyas and about the consciousness. Most of the time, we discover a lot of things. We discover a lot of things. The four things is common in our life. Any general life. Kalahara, Nidra, and Bhaya, Maithana. Ahara means food, Nidra means to sleep, Bhaya means afraid of death or insecurity. And Maithana means getting the pleasure, getting the sensual pleasure or gratification of the senses. So these are the four things that we experience generally in our common life. And animal also they enjoy the four things. They have also experienced four things. So, but as for the yogic life or as for the tantric life or as for the sannyas life, the four things need to be observed and witnessed. It means you have to transcend or to transform the animal qualities into divine. Mm, transform all your animal qualities. So tamas, the animal qualities means here is called tamasic. Although it is survival, it is the tamasic. And once you are transformed, then you have to be creative. You have to be positive. Then turn to rajasic. And once you are come to rajasic, then you are able to observe. Generally, when a tamasi person cannot observe, you are involved. Mm? Ahara, Nidra, Bhaya, Maitana, like the animals, they are involved. They can't witness. They don't know what they're doing. Mm? But when you transfer to the positive, means say, to rather say, you are creative, you are positive, you are awakening, and you are conscious. And once you are come to Rajasik Gunas, we have three Gunas. Actually, we are four. Eh? Tamasik, Rajasik, Sattvic, and Turiyati, the transcendental consciousness. Then these four qualities, Ahara, Nidra, Vaya, Maituna, you have to translate and transform to Rajasi. Then you have to witness of the, the four skills, four qualities, four, like Ahara, Nidra, Vaya, Maituna. You have to witness what kind of food you are taking, Ahara, Nidra. How many hours you sleep? Are you consciously sleep, unconsciously, or subconsciously you will sleep? So you have to check this conscious. Unconscious and subconscious. So that will rise equality. So when you are witness of the you know, all these four qualities, that means you are prone to, you are entering to sati qualities. Sati means you are total observed, total witness. Then slowly you are entering into Turiyati state of the consciousness, that known as transcendental consciousness. Where you are going to obtain, where you are going to realize, where are you going to understand the Atma Jnana, Brahma Jnana, hmm? and where you are totally liberated through the wisdom for the Vidyas. So, how to define the Vidya and Avidyas? Once you are entering into uh, the state of the consciousness of the 
the transcendental consciousness there you are obtained the vidya so therefore you have to understand now what is the vidya so vidya means make you free and free from the all sufferings avidya means where you are suffering every moments of your life there is some question mark comes i am not suffering <laughs> i am happy also so unless you have questions you have cross questions but how long your happiness is going on so that you have to observe eh? so here uh, vidya means which a person a person can maintain constantly and continuously the harmony of the mind the equanimous of the mind so that is the vidya the knowledge santosham we call in sanskrit it is santosha hmm? it is samadukha huh? when you have a, when you have happiness or sometimes you have the sorrowness so the time you have happiness and sorrowness in between or when you have the sufferings when you are facing sufferings or the happiness you have to maintain the harmony or that kal santosham we have to have self contentment eh? self contentment contentment is very important therefore we study in rasi yoga saucha santosha hmm? saucha santosha and then what is study tapasya iswar pranidhan then what else saucha tapah hmm. tapah and saucha santosha so these are the topics there the five things there saucha santosh is very important and without santosh i don't think you can walk on the path of spirituality so it is very important how to adopt the santosh hmm there's many things are there also in yama and niyama so niyama is the tapasya saucha santosha swadhaya and iswar pranidha hmm? this is the five things to be maintained in niyama but it's very important sometimes it's not possible to saucha saucha means purification so it's not purification of our body but purification of our karma purification of our mind purification of our heart purification of our emotions purification of our thoughts that is very important sometimes you have all purification maybe you say oh, my heart is so much purified oh my mind is so good but everything are good but your thoughts are not good and without purification of thoughts and you can't say that you have the you are the purified ones right so purification is very important your thoughts and eh? until you have the so far you have thoughts that no proper purifications and so far thoughts there it means your mind is a continuously active and and acting also active and acting all the time the nature of the mind to create a positive and negative both sides hmm? the nature of the mind always constantly creating positive or negative so therefore we have to translate the positive and the negative mind that where you are going to attain the samadhi that is sampragan samadhi if you have been studied the rasa yoga hmm? patanjali sutra so that is sampragyan samadhi sam means harmony pragya means wisdom that will thought to thoughtless transformations the total transformation of the thoughts that leads to the samadhi and that leads to the purifications that the real saucha hmm? so this is the metaphysical understandings but normally saucha means people think you have to take the shower early morning maybe clean the teeth maybe clean the tongue go to asana class eh huh? is all about saucha so actually patanjali uh, patanjali yogi the rishi patanjali he not explain about to uh, only taking the shower or cleaning the teeth many time not like that hmm? it's different things but of course is hot yoga when you practice hot yoga you must take shower you must clean your teeth you must clean your tongue or clean your eyes or ears or intestinal and things okay that is sauj that the purification like sort kriyas to study hmm? that is very important also for the asana practice in hot yoga but as per the patanjali patanjali yoga maharshi is he talk about to the cleanliness of your within hmm? mind thought emotions passions and soul so then santosha comes when you have santosha naturally you adopt the saucha 
uh, and tapas happen itself naturally. Swayabha means self inquiries, not about to study Gita, Upanishad, or sacred scriptures. She is not about so adhaya. So means there are one. Adhaya means self inquiries, self study. So self study means self inquiries. And self inquiries means witness whatever happening uh, in the chittas. Why do you study chitta, vritti, nirodha? So Swayabha means. And becoming witness of the Chitta Brittis. That is the real Swadhyaya. Hmm? That is the real Swadhyaya where you can observe of yourself. But most of the time, Swadhyaya means people say study the sacred scriptures. Actually, not. Sacred scriptures are not enough to have the self knowledge or the Atmagyan or the Pramagyan. Okay? So that you have to be clear. Of course, the sacred scriptures are very important and to have some guidelines to a walking path of a Atmanyan or the Brahmanyan, but that is not enough. Even that you study yourself, all sacred scriptures you may study yourself, that is also not going to help you. You must study under the guidance of the Acharyas, under the guidance of the Gurus. Then the sacred scriptures you can understood properly. Hmm? Understood properly. You can check that also sometimes. You can study all the Gitas, all the slokas in English commentary or whatever available to your mother tongue. You are not going to understand them properly. That will be clear. That is what I have been experienced also. So therefore, you have to study all kinds of sacred scriptures as per your culture, as per your guru. And that is very important. And number things, then Ahara, sorry, Tapasya, then Saucha. What I'm speaking about is Santosha. Then Isor Pranidhan comes. Isor Pranidhan means here self surrender. Actually, not possible to self surrender the self dedication. And it's not possible. And what you have to do? Self surrender, not about to surrender to God or to the Guru, but dedicate to yourself and to know yourself. That is very important. Most of the time, we don't dedicate to ourselves to know ourselves. So therefore, uh, Isor Pranidhan is very difficult. But once you have adopted Tantosa, contentment, naturally, and you are going to cultivate the four skills, eh? naturally going to happen Swasya, means how to purify yourself, and then Tapasya going to happen, how to meditate, how to perform your austerity, then, and self-enquiry Swadhyaya comes naturally, Isor Pranidhan comes naturally. So, Saucha, Santosha, Tapasya, Swadhara, and Isor Pranidhan is all about to, not the physical training, is all about to discipline of the morals, discipline of the emotions, discipline of the psychic channels. That you must be clear. Physically not possible. So, that you have to be clear. And these all are the helping you the walk in the path of the sannyas. Sannyas is like your only terminology, but uh, you have to understand how to uh, how to have the code of disciplines of the for this sannyas path. No matter if you are living in the Brahmacharya or the Grihastha or Banagrastha or the final sannyas. But for the Atma Jnana and to experience the higher love, the higher truth, uh, the reality, or what is not reality, to understood them properly. You have to have certain skills. Huh? You have to have certain skills. That is very, very important. And without skills, very difficult to walk the path of uh, freedom. So another way, sannyas means path of freedom. So ultimately, you can uh, define in this, you can put some words. Sannyas means path of freedom. Path of Atmagyan, path of Brahmagyan, and where a person a seeker, a sadhaka, or the sadhika, free from the miseries of the samsara, free from the samsara's all duties, and engage in a divine consciousness. But a question mark comes if I always engage in the for the higher consciousness, how to survive? Sometimes we think like that. Eh? If I'm going to get sannyas, then where I should live? 
do I have my apartment? Do I have my home? Who can provide me food? Who can provide me cloth? Where the money comes? Who can pay my bills? Right? We have many questions. <laughs> and if I take sannyas, if I'm going to old, what will happen? Who going to take care of me when I'm alone? You understand? As a man and a woman, you think all the time. No, I need some bank balance, right? I need some uh, security. I need to pay some uh, insurance, right? So we have so many thoughts coming. Before you take sannyas, not after sannyas, before taking sannyas, such a people never can walk the path of sannyas. Such a people never can walk the path of freedom. Such a person never can walk the path of Atmagyan or Brahmagyan. The question mark come to you, Atman, I'm thinking now. So what is it? I'm ready. <laughs> right? So you all the time thinking. So if I take sannyas, what would happen? Who going to pay my electric bill? In case I decide to be sannyas, going to Himalaya, stay Swami Samarpan Ashram, Guruji Ashram, maybe another day kick out me. So what I have to do? So maybe I can do some karma yoga now. Keep feeding me, give me a nice house because I'm young now. So I can work and get my chapati and food and do yoga and meditation. But happens, maybe Swami Samarpana gone. Maybe they are asking going to kick out me. When I'm old, what can I do? So neither I'm living in Germany or Italy, I'm going to Himalaya. What I have to do? So this kind of question mark comes. Fear creates, insecurity comes. Like sometimes since Naina Mam coming to India, she has oh no, I have to go to Lachmula, stay in my apartment, let me relax. I come to talk with you, then I can think about to stay rational or not. <laughs> you see, what kind of education you have? Insecurity, insecure, fear. That kind of bhaiya, and this is the quality of animal. But honestly, I want to share some experience of my sannyas life. Is of 18, I left the home. I left the home simply from east part of India, and I was never thinking about it, you know. I was never thinking about it. And what going to happen the next step of sannyas? Today I'm young, tomorrow I die, where I have to get the food and cloth and so, nothing. I have no ideas, nothing. In my head, there is no questions. Like you people have a lot of questions in your head. What I have to do? I have to discuss. I have to go to ashram or not. I don't have this kind of brain, even that consciousness. I simply, it was the awakening of the consciousness. I decided the Odisha. I laid my mother, please. And uh, I saw my mother and in 90, and uh, that was my last visitor, the 30th of August, 1990. And I never saw her physically. Of course, she left her body on the 11th of July recently. I never saw her again. That was my last visit, 30th of August, 1990. I never saw her again. And I never talked with her again, physically or anything. Even not wrote any letters, nothing. So what I mean, that is my relation to our families. But when I left the Orissa, I never think that I never look the back, never. And I never look the future, neither past nor the future. I simply left and come to Gurukul in Sivanda Ashram and joined the Gurukul life. That was my starting the beginning of the sannyas life. And today I'm 49 feet. I never look the back and never I'm also looking the forward. Sanyas life is all about to live in the present. Saha Bartamana Yogi. You see, in, in Gita, Lord Krishna explained, Sa Yogi, Saha Bartamana Yogi means to live in the present moment. If you don't live in the present moment, you can't live in the future moments. The present moment, your life, always with the unconscious, always with the doubt, always with the fear, always with the insecurity, the next moment leads to the insecurity as well. No matter, you live 100 years, the insecurity continuously with you because that's the nature of the mind. That's called chitta. Hmm? Chitta abriti niraditi yoga. So, so, you have to awaken the consciousness, the path of freedom. It's not a matter of you have to take sannyas. I'm not speaking that. You're supposed not follow me. You have to follow yourself. I always say that you never follow me. And no one should follow me also because I never follow no one. <laughs> I am a person never follow to no one. And no one should to follow me also. I always say that very clearly. As a yogi principles, one has to look within. And one has to follow himself. Whatever suitable is for you. I'm here just make me some jokes 
or you think Swami is critic to me, like Noina or Atmananda or not. I'm not criticizing you. Just I give some examples. Is a general human being who have such kind of consciousness. Everybody has this. But I was free that time, age of 18, even age of, uh, uh, I was class six already, I was free. I was very free as of even class six. Already I want to be a sannyas. But somehow I have some karma. I return to home all the time to the mama. Because my mother, my mom was very close to me. So somehow I always return. So after graduation, I decided, and it was strong conviction also. So you can see that, that the consciousness awakened. Anyhow, so my mother knows also long time, childhood. I, I was many times left the home, many, many times. 100 million times already left the home. And always uh, I used to return to home <laughs> to my mom. And uh, even in class, uh, even when I was studying class five, class six, class seven, every year I used to left the home some days out and to get the sannyas or to be sadhu. So it was uh, the time and there was not a proper opportunity to take sannyas or have proper ashrams in around the village or around the city is not possible. So finally, I left all the way to the Himalayas. And once you arrive in Himalayas, very difficult to return also. <laughs> so Himalayas like the end of the road. Eh? Like in London, see, this, uh, this train terminates this place, not terminates. <laughs> even when I went to London first time, I never understood this kind of language. Even. Although I was not well-educated English, but anyhow, certain things I never understood. So what I mean today, so sannyas life and about to the life of freedom. And that is uh, very difficult, very difficult, but that is not impossible. It is all possible, but you have to make efforts. And without proper efforts, not possible to walk in the path of sannyas, not the walk, not walk in the path of even freedoms. And when Walking path of freedom, it means you supposed to not think the past, not think the future. That's the sansara. You think about the past, you think about the future, and not live in the present. And that is called samsara. If you think always the future, if you always think the past, you are remain the sansara. The path of freedom does not appear to you. If you, know, you are not walking one state of one step of the freedom. Huh? So that is very, very important. So, of course. As we are human being, we have to have some plans. But I say that even I have no plans. As a patient, when I left the home, I have no plans at all. Neither the, for the past, not for the... Even I was never thinking about past. And no plans for the future, even today. Today I'm sitting here with you. I'm giving lectures in Himalaya. This next month, what will happen? I don't know. Although I have a lot of projects. But there are not so many expectations to fulfill. You have to have some project. You have to have some plans to live in the material world, right? But you suppose not have expectations from that projections, whatever projected by your mind. Because the law of nature, your mind always to have some projections. You have to have some projects. Yeah? You see that when you life in the society, in the samsara, you have some projects, right? You have this project, that project, this project, like government, there are so many projects they have. But sometimes they fulfill, sometimes they know, right? Like politicians, <laughs> they bring so many topics, so many projects for the society. And sometimes they fulfill, sometimes not. They're going to say, oh, I'm so sorry, this project not happened. Next time, you give me vote, I'll, be, I'll fulfill your all the projects, right? <laughs> so like that, so human mind, and we have the human brain. If you don't have this brain and mind, so always we create so many projects, so many projects, but all project projections are not going to fulfill. So therefore, you have to understand properly. When some projects are not fulfilled, you supposed to not be sad, and you have to be diplomatic like politicians. Huh? You are not lying to your mind, but you have to like a diplomatic. Oh mind, you are not fulfilling this. So leave it, forget it. So like this. So you have to be diplomatic yourself to your own mind. Own your creations and in a friendly manner, like diplomatic politicians. They diplomatically they speak the truth. They not speak the truth. They are always liar. So similarly, so you have to little bit diplomatic lie to your own self. And I'm sure 
you're coming out of all your difficulties, all your problems, all your expectations, no doubts. So we have to learn how to diplomatically lie to yourself in order to free from your own suffering, own miseries like the politicians, they're free from miseries and suffering from the, from the citizens. There are excuse, so many excuses to the citizens. Uh -huh. And they always say, give me vote, give me vote. So if I'm elected, your prime minister for your country, I'll fulfill all your desires. Even I'm feeding and milking your all your babies, right? <laughs> so like that. So therefore, you have to be friendly to yourself, to your mind, to your abhidyas, to your asmita, raga, vesa, and avinivesa. You have to be very friendly to yourself. Then possible one day, and you can walk the path of freedom, and one day you can walk the path of sannyas, and one day you can realize the Atma Jnana and the Brahma Jnana. Am I clear that today? But anyway, this video we are going to share with all of you, and we are going to share. We are going to send it to all of you this. So it's no problem that. So you can again check it. Sometimes also I listen what I speak. And if there are some mistakes, I try to correct to myself. And as soon as I watch uh, how I speak and how it comes. But sometimes I just speak and speak without uh, looking the all kinds of scriptures and books and all these things. But uh, most of the time I speak out of my own experiences. And I have some visions of the masters. Mm -hmm. So normally, I watch always and observe. So try your best, you observe and watch to the onwards and live in the moment. Learn live in the moment. We say Saha Yogi Sa Bartaman Who your Bartaman means this moment. Sa Yogi, the Yogi who live in the present moment, and they can live also in the future. So if you don't live the present moment in harmony, you can't live the harmony of life in the future. So always learn this. And that is not possible and uh, quickly to adapt, but possible, the skills you can adapt only through meditations, regular meditations. So you can do at least regular meditation, one minute, two minute, or three minute, or four minute, or five minutes. Maybe five minutes regular. So one day you realize at least you can live this some moments. In five minutes, of course, not possible. You live one moment yourself also. Because the five minutes, million thoughts are coming. Tremendous thoughts are coming. Trillion thoughts are coming. You want to do this, you want to do that, you want to do this, that. So the mind is out of it. Mind not will be under your control, even five minutes. Not possible even live in one moment yourself. So it takes a long time. To develop the skills, how to live one moment yourself. That's what I have been experienced in my long, long meditations. Am I clear that? The moment, the day you live for one moment, that moment you conquer yourself. That moment, since that moment onwards, we can walk in path of freedom. Otherwise, it's not possible. So check yourself tonight. Is it I'm live one moment for myself? Or every moment I live for others? Or fulfill for my, the desires of the mind, expectation of a mind, desires of the mind, wishes of the mind. Generally, we always live the wishes of expectation of the mind. Generally, we are always live the wishes, the expectation, the wanting, the desire, the creation of our mind. We never actually live the moment of ourself, not it's not possible. Until unless you have the Atma Jnana. So what I'm speaking is the, is the subject of Atma Jnana. Simple witness of the totality of your mind without fulfilling any expectation of the mind. And that moment you must realize. The moment you realize, I'm very sure that day you're awakening the Kundalini, that day you are awakening of the consciousness, that day you are free from all sufferings. 
and that skills that education leads all the way free from the all kind of suffering no matter what kind of suffering you are going to face in matter world no doubts and you will be free and i'm pretty sure because that what i have been realized so no matter what kind of problems and miseries comes and i'm pretty sure always can be overcome because that i have been experienced not i'm speaking intellectually clear so let you experience this moment and free from all your miseries and difficulties and karma of the past okay and this is all about the sanyas life walking the path of a truth and life in the moment and you have life each moment on the truth that is very very important and that we are looking for it and that we are looking for it. and you should and nobody actually really wish to live the life of a avidyas no one else okay thank you om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamadachate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vashishyate om shante 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 om gum गुरुभ्यो नमः हरे ओम सो थैंक्स टू ऑल मी आर गुरुदेव समशिवानंद आदि गुरु शंकराचार्य लॉर्ड शिवा मां परासती ब्लेस यू ऑल थैंक यू एंड सी यू अगेन एट 8 पीएम टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू विजिट नाउ वन गुरुजी श्री विद्या गुरुजी इज वन ऑफ माय ग्रेट मास्टर इन साइंस ऑफ तंत्र so i am going to visit him he is 93 years old now just going to pranam he has some difficulties a little bit he has some uh, heart problems here really. so he went to army hospital to check up so i am going to pranam i am going to do pranam and get some guidelines i never know i even last year i get uh, this uh, sleep vidya 